Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. Let me tell y'all something. We're going to find out just how good Bam Rodriguez is uh, this weekend. Full name, Jesse James Rodriguez Franco, right? Everyone calls him Bam. Let me tell you, what, what he did as a flyweight, absolutely mind-blown. The way he beat Sonny Edwards, mind-blown. So you got to give him all the credit in the world. Matter of fact, that last fight of his, where he went in there and tranquilized Sonny Edwards, who fought his heart out, that put Bam Rodriguez at the bottom of the top 10 pound for pound. Now you may say, that sounds harsh, right? That he, he, he gets a huge win and then he ends up on the bottom of a list. But there's only 10 names on that list. And for him to even get on that list is a huge accomplishment, especially for him being a guy from a very low weight class. Uh, Michael Carvajal made the lighter weight classes very popular. And Bam Rodriguez is looking to continue in his footsteps as he gets ready to take on Estrada in Phoenix this weekend. But let me let me let me explain something to y'all. When we're when we're talking about boxing, we start looking at these fighters, the Lomachenkos and what they did as an amateur, the Regendal, what they did as an amateur, the Andy Cruz is what they did as an amateur, Majumov, what he did as an amateur, Yusik, what he did as an amateur, Earl Spence, and all these guys who are Olympians, you know, Roy Jones, Floyd Mayweather. You got to understand something when it comes to Bam Rodriguez. He won two U.S. National Youth Championships as well as a 2016 U.S. Junior Open Tournament. At international level, he won the silver medal at the 2015 Junior World Championships. Okay? So, he has a sound amateur pedigree as well. But although he went out here and he got some huge victories, right? The one that really got my attention with him is when he got in the ring uh, with, uh, Rod, um, with, with Edwards last year. I watched when he fought uh, Gonzalez and when he fought um, before that, when he fought uh, Rung Vasai, and I remember what Rung Vasai did to Chocolito. I remember all that. But but I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, this is this is what he's up against. If you don't if you don't know much about, let me show you who who he's getting ready to fight. Right. This is the thing where people need to understand these fighters. Okay. See if I can show this to you. This, this right here, right? Juan Francisco Estrada. He is a monster. Forty-four four wins, three losses. Don't don't sit there and look at those three losses and all of a sudden think that this is something like a cherry pick um, by Bam Rodriguez and his team for him to bubble up from flyweight to super flyweight to get an easy win against the biggest name in that division. Let me let me explain something to you about what Bam is about to walk into. He's about to walk into the ultimate Mexican mashup crash up. Now we know Bam can fight from the first second of the first round to the last second of the last round. He's very talented, very intelligent, very ambitious, very aggressive. He has a chin, and he just he talk about finding a way to win. He figures it out. He's 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 got the goods. But but let me tell you, this this Juan Francisco Estrada. Let me pull. Let me just let's just focus on him, right? This is why I'm concerned about Bam Rodriguez in this fight. Juan Francisco Estrada, when he was a little kid. Okay, I'm gonna paint the picture for you. Let me let me enlarge this so we can paint the picture the right way. This guy right here, a little bit larger, right? Because I want y'all to, to to understand where I'm going with this. Get that guy out of there. Okay, this face you're seeing on the screen. When he was a little kid, he lost his mother to cancer, and then shortly thereafter, he lost his father. Right now, his father he grew up in a fishing village, okay, out there in Mexico, and of course his dad was a fisherman. If his mother and dad would have probably still been around, he probably would have grown up and become a fisherman himself. But he lost his mother at a young age, then he lost his dad, 
the way he lost his dad, his dad being the fisherman he was, uh, had his um, had the oxygen tanks on and he was diving down. Something about his fishing equipment to repair it. Anyway, the oxygen in the tanks, something happened with the tanks. His dad ended up dying while scuba diving and doing, you know, what what he 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 enjoyed doing, and to to ensure he could take care of his family. So anyway, his father dies in that unfortunate accident out there on the on the ocean. Now, Juan Francisco Estrada, he bounced around from aunts and family houses with cousins and everything, uh, till eventually they re relocated to um, another part of Mexico, um, where there he actually got into boxing, and what he told himself when he would go to the gym is that he would see kids with a mother and father, and he used to feel like, damn, I don't have any parents. And that was his motivation. He said, you know what? I'm gonna make sure that this fisherman's son does something with himself. And that was his motivation when he got in the ring. And that is gonna be his motivation when he takes on Bam Rodriguez this Saturday in Phoenix. See, I didn't know that whole story. I read up on him, and I'm like, damn. That's 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 a lot to try to overcome as a little bitty kid, man. And then throughout your adolescent years, bounce around and, you know, finally you get in the boxing, and now looks like good things have happened for him. But going into this weekend, I'm telling you, Bam Rodriguez can scrap. He's talented, man, like once-in-a-lifetime type of fighter. But I just think Juan Francisco Estrada has once-in-a-lifetime type of motivation. Now, I'm not picking Estrada to win. I'm not picking Rodriguez to win. This is one where I think truly the fans win. Uh, this is going to be the ultimate mashup crash-up. For those of you out there who only know who Bam Rodriguez is and don't know who Juan Francisco Estrada is, and you think Bam is going to get in there and outwork him and overwhelm him and break him down and discourage him, and you'll hold your horses and don't take it to the stupid. Let me tell you something. What Bam Rodriguez does to fighters in the ring, that's what Juan Francisco Estrada does to opponents in the ring. Matter of fact, Juan Estrada, he gets opponents in the ring that have that mashup, crash-up style of fighting like him, and he breaks them down. Now you got Jesse Rodriguez bubbling up to, to uh, super flyweight, and he's going to have to figure out a way to try to break down a guy with the ambition and motivation to make sure that his dad, the fisherman, didn't die in vain and that his son, the fisherman's son, the kid who wasn't supposed to become anything but a fisherman, he had to figure out a way to break that guy's motivation. And, and I'm telling y'all right now, it's much easier said than, than done. I just think this is one of those fights Unfortunately, a lot of people don't really know who both of these guys are. But this is the fight you don't want to miss. You know in them lower weight classes, them guys throw thousands of punches. But the, these two guys are looking to get in there, go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and it's just a matter of attrition and, and who can last the longest. It's, this shit reminds, it reminded me of when I was out there um, and I used to be in the pool and my friends and I, we used to play that game too, hold their breath the longest in the water. And I, could, I used to be able to hold my breath for like over three minutes, right? So they weren't winning. But to me, this is what that is. It's like, okay, let's see who can kind of hold their breath the longest underwater. And somebody's going to kick. Somebody's going to start blacking out. Somebody's going to do something, and they go come up for air. And the person who comes up for air loses. Uh, and, and that's what I think this is going to be like with Estrada and Rodriguez. Just like I used to be out there with my friends. We used to bet $10. And I have, I have one friend, one friend. Uh, that mo he he had a he had gills on one side, but I had gills on both sides, and we were underwater for like two minutes and like fifteen seconds, and we were just watching each other, and you know, he wasn't showing any signs of distress, but all of a sudden I saw him shoot his ass up, and when he shot his ass up, I stayed under another like thirty seconds, then I emerged slowly, and they were just like Jesus Christ, you know, hood champions got gills, but but nonetheless, we're gonna see who has gills this weekend. Because this is definitely one of those type of fights. 
How good is Bam? I tell you what, as an amateur, he, he passed the test. As a pro so far, he's passed the test. He's on the pound for pound rankings. He's passing the test. But up at super flyweight battling a guy like Juan Francisco Estrada with the ambition and motivation of what he's fighting for, I don't think it's going to be so easy for Bam, for Bam Rodriguez to pass this test. Hard to break the motivation down and desire and drive of someone who's fighting to make sure his pops didn't die in vain and that he's just not seen as the fisherman's son who couldn't quite cut it. Y'all keep cool. Shout out to the veterans, all seven consonants. This is, no kidding, the Mexican mashup crash-up. I don't care that band born here in the United States. This is a Mexican mashup crash-up. Do not miss this fight. I won't. Keep cool. I'm in the breeze.